on this YouTube channel about learning how to work with concrete as a hobby, one of the most common questions that I get asked relates to concrete mix design. And what that means is making your own concrete mix yourself, as opposed to just ordering ready mixed concrete from a concrete supplier, you're going to make your own using the base components like cement and sand and gravel and a host of other potential things depending on your application. <laughs> now, normally, concrete is engineered, and by that I mean the mix design is very specific, but for everything other than engineered applications like a concrete building or the foundation for your home or something to that degree, for anything decorative, for anything countertop or hobbyist level, you don't need to use engineering level specifications. I'll give you an example here. When I work with concrete mix design, I deal with ratios. And the ratio is always based on the cement component. So one cement component of cement. And then I would use two of sand for my most common concrete mix. And then four of gravel. It's very important to understand that the, it doesn't matter if it's a little container like this or a shovel full or a bucket full or, a, you know, a giant amount. As long as the ratio is kept in proportion, then the mix will work true. And my point here is that a lot of people will then ask me, well, what about, is that by volume or is that by weight? Like, what is the, the way that you're doing this? That's an engineering specification. By the time that that matters to you, you shouldn't really be doing this yourself. At least that's my opinion. So at the bench top level, I just go with by volume. You know, one shovel full, one bucket full, and then base the ratio on my cement component. So I wanna to talk to you today about what I would consider to be one of the single best do-it-yourself or at-home mixes that you can make. And it's very simple. It's a, and super useful. There's a lot of different applications you would use this for. So again, one cement component, one little container, one five gallon bucket, whatever the case is for you, depending on how much you're going to need. One, and let's just talk about the cement for a second here because this is important. It's not masonry cement, it's Portland cement. Very important because there's two different kinds. You want Portland cement. There are different kinds of Portland cement. There's actually a bunch of different kinds of Portland cement. So you just want the most common one, which would normally be called type N for normal or type GU for general use. The, those will probably find you the right product depending on where you live. So we're gonna use one of those. For the sand component, we want two. And the quality of the sand matters here. We don't want sticks and bottle caps and other things like that, but because this is a concrete mix and not a mortar mix for thinner applications, if you have the presence of some little stones and some, you know, different sized aggregates there, that's not a big deal at all. In fact, that's actually kind of preferable because you have a variance in the sizes there. So one cement, two sand, and then four gravel. And the gravel really is there just for bulk of yield. Like if we just did the one cement and two sand and stopped there, that would be a super strong, super useful mortar that I would commonly use for like sculpting concrete, like this guy here. That's exactly what that one's made out of, that mix there. Adding the gravel bulks up the yield. Now we have so much more volume for almost the same amount of money because gravel's not like expensive, right? You can get, when you're buying bulk, aggregates, you can get a lot of gravel, a lot of sand for not very much money. So we've got the one cement, two sand, four gravel, and now we have the bulk of yield. And here's the trick. So this product here is an acrylic fortifier. And the name that it goes by really isn't important because you might have a different manufacturer brand of concrete admixture near you. What you just need to know here is that it's not the PVA because there's kind of two primary admixtures that you'll see on the shelf. One is PVA, which is just glue. It's thick. Uh, if you shake the bottle and it's thick, that's the wrong one. This one's thin, like milk. 
And what you would want to do is replace 10% of the liquid that you're going to use in this mix with this liquid acrylic product here. So you now know the ratio product that we're gonna use. However much water that it ends up taking to achieve the viscosity that you need for the placing and finishing for whatever your application is. Take 10% of that water away, replace that 10% of water with this liquid acrylic product. Okay, so here's the cool part. This is actually functionally a really useful mix, really affordable, there's a lot of economy in it, and I think a lot of people would agree that the addition of the 10% acrylic product really enhances this. It makes a relatively high quality bench top or enthusiast level concrete mix design, but let's improve it still. So this stuff here would represent the most expensive part of this mix that we're making here. You know, the sand and the gravel are so inexpensive when you buy them by bulk, the cost is hard to even count. It's almost negligible. With the acrylic, like the cement is going to be appreciably expensive, but the acrylic here in this mix, it certainly is the most expensive thing. And if we had to make a lot of this product because we're doing a lot of concrete, we would end up spending a lot on that acrylic. So let's find a way where you completely do not do that. So acrylic and latex concrete fortifier could readily be, be replaced with just acrylic or latex paint. Old acrylic or latex paint, as long as it's not fouled or ruined, then you can use that as a direct one-to-one -one replacement for this product. So instead of adding 10% of the liquid volume of this product here in your mixed design, you're just going to use 10% latex paint. And if you're wondering, well, will this augment the color? It will augment the color. However, it's, it's notable that it'll be minimally so. Even if you use a really bold or a really bright color, the gray cement component is just, it's like gray dye, if you were to imagine that, instead of just powder. Th picture this as being like gray ink. And so if you added some bright color, you know, in a small quantity to this gray ink, will it change it? It will, but just a very t small amount. If you want more aggressive colorations, you would have to change the cement component to a white cement. And then you would have more dramatic reactions with coloration that you added to, to it. But you notably would be increasing the cost of your cement component because white cement is much more expensive than general use or type normal Portland cement. So this is a great mix design for do-it-yourself. One part cement, two parts sand, four parts gravel, and replace 10% of the liquid content with acrylic or latex paint. And if you want the coloration to be more dramatic, you can attempt to locate and use a white Portland cement instead of the gray Portland cement component. This is probably going to take care of anything that you would have up to and including, you know, the anything that becomes a structural or engineering level project. You don't want to do that, but if you've got sidewalks or steps or potholes or any other thing that you need to fix or you want to make something, you want it to be super strong, you want it to be, you know, resistant to water permeation, you want to have like an integral color mixed in with it, this mix will allow you to do that. And honestly, it's pennies on the dollar. This is extremely cost effective when you start buying the base components and designing your own concrete mixes and mixing them for yourself. I hope you found this information help you, helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel.